everyone my name is digvijay and welcome back to my youtube channel pick up pencil so today's video is going to be a fairly short video we are going to learn about java math class so basically this class uh, as a name suggest math class which is basically a built in uh, class in java and it has predefined methods that we can use in our day to day uh, mathematical calculation whenever we need them so this math class provides us a bunch of methods we are going to look at them the important methods one by one with programming so this class basically provides us those useful method we can directly use them we can directly invoke those method and we can have the desired out output so and those methods are basically around the mathematical calculation so this math class is provided under the java.lang package so basically package is something which contains a multiple classes and this math class belongs to java.lang package and the way you will use this class and any method you want to invoke through this class through this class name which is math dot method name so basically if you want to have a, a maxim max method so math math dot max and we are going to look into detail how actually we are going to invoke the methods from this math class so let's start so i'm going to uh I'm moving to the next slides which talks about the important methods of math class. So if you see here there are a bunch of methods here which are readily available in the math class and we directly have to invoke them and we can get the desired out output. So if you see math.min, max, power, square root, cubic root, log absolute rent fill floor method exponential method so all of the methods which you actually all these all the terms you may be finding very similar in the mathematics subjects so a lot of times you will be given a problem which is basically a mathematical based so you should know or a formula is given but you have to solve that so solve that whole equation or the formula by applying these methods which are available in the math class so next i am going to open the editor where i have already have a program uh, written and we are going to go over the program one by one and we are going to see the application and how to really use these important methods of math class so i am going back to my this java editor i'm using i use intellij but you are free to use any of the java editor you want so what i've done here is i have already made a simple program called i created a sample uh, class called math demo it has a public static void min method you already know this and then one by one i am trying to show that how actually we can use these methods here one by one so the first method we are going to talk about is min method so min method is as the name suggests it accepts two uh, integers so two values and it can be a double and it can be a various data type so right now i'm i'm just taking integer but you can take even double also so if you see here this min method accepts two integer and after this once we have executed math dot min method providing two integers it will return us the minimum value between uh, basically which is the minimum value either 20 or 100 we know that you know it's obviously going to be 20 but this is how the program will let us know and similarly you know i have um, i have another taken another example here with a double so what i'm all I wanted to say here, it is not necessary that you know all the time you have to take integer because this min method can return a double value. That's why I've taken another variable, min double, and I'm applying the same form, same method, math dot min, 
passing two double values, right, which has a decimal, and then I'm printing what this method is providing us the minimum value within these two, okay? And similarly, so let me just show the demo of this section here. I'm going to run this program, run this math demo main program. It's building here, if you can see, and we are going to see a bunch of output. We're gonna go them one by one. So if you see here, right, minimum value return int. So let's take an example of int. So minimum value is 20, obviously. Between 20 and 100, the minimum is 20. So that is why it's just a sample right now, 20 and 100, but you can use, you can provide any kind of number you want and you can use anywhere you want, wherever you want to do this kind of mathematical operation. And the second one is the minimum between 10.5 and 15.8. It's 10.5, so that is what it has printed here. So let's, uh, okay, so next uh, we wanted to uh, see how we can invoke the max method of this math class. So I have taken the max integer math dot max method, and I'm expecting the maximum value to be returned. So between the maximum value is return is 100. If you see, if you provide, again, max method again accepts Two, uh, two integers or it can be double or it can be other types as well. So it is going to pro, uh, return the maximum value which is 100 and we can see it over here. So let's take the example of the third important method which is the power method, power raised. So math.power. So what is going to be two raised to the power four, right? So that is how it is going to print here, uh, 2 to the 4, 4 to the 8. So it's basically 4 uh, raised to power 2. So so it's going to be 16. So 4 into 4 is nothing but it's here coming as 16. So, so it's basically 4 raised to power 2 is 16. So and next we want to talk about the square root method. So square root method is uh, basically taking the square root of any number provided. So we can use this method here, math.square root, math.square root, and we pass 36, and it is going to return us the square root of 36. And we know the square root of 36 is 6, which is is provided by the this math.square root method when we invoked it. Now, next is cubic root method. So I have taken a new variable called the double type, math.cubic root, which is cubic root of 30. I want to calculate cubic root of 30, and that is what I'm trying to print here. So when this method was executed, the cubic root of 30 was 3.17, this long value here. So we are going to see the demonstration of all these methods here which are provided in the math class so all these methods the code code for these methods is already you know available in java we are just using them that's all it is so next is the log method i've taken a variable called log in double type so math dot log so what is the log value of 2.5 so there are going to be hundred way hundreds of ways of looking the log value of any number you can use a table or any other you know references but if you want to do it in java you just have to do math.log 2.5 what is the value log value of 2.5 log value returned is nothing but 0 0.9 this so this is the output for that next is absolute so math.absolute so absolute is basically nothing but as the name suggests returning the absolute value which doesn't have any positive or negative, which doesn't basically talks about the positive or the negative side. So that is why if we say math.abs, which is for absolute, and we provide a negative number, it will convert into that, into the positive number. And again, if I just provide just the, not the negative number, just the positive number, again, the positive of positive will be nothing but the positive itself. So it is going to return the same result, which is 32.5. So absolute will take out the minus sign if it is provided, that's all it is. So next is round method. So basically it rounds the value within the points. It doesn't keep 
in the decimals, but it rounds it. So return the nearest integer. So and it so the round method will return only in long and integer. So if you see here math dot round nineteen point five, and if we try to print it, what happens after this statement was executed? Math dot round. So if you see here round was twenty. 19.5 it got rounded and it was 19 point it was 20. now next is rent function function so nearest it also return nearest integer right and round also uh, include uh, it returns the nearest integer but what is the difference between these two the difference is the data type rent always returns a double value but the round returns in long and long and integer value. So that is why if you see the difference here, right, I'm using two different methods, round and rent, which basically does the same thing. And I have provided the same input, but the difference what we got, we got the value 20 for both. But the first one round, which only has integer and long, it just provided the whole number 20 without any decimal, decimal. but rent, since it's, it returns in double, so that is why it has provided 20.0. So that is the difference. Rent uh, will return the value in terms of double value, double type. Okay, now CL value, CIL. Okay, so next highest number. So anything you provide, any input you provide, any math, mathematical number you provide in decimal, it will provide the next highest number in double data type. So if you see, I have provided 19.5 and I've got 20, 20.0 20 since because it is provided in double. Okay, so now next is uh, floor, floor method of math. So whenever I say math.floor, I give any input here. So what's gonna happen? it is going to return the next lowest number. So floor represent uh, like, you know, a bottom of something you can say floor and roof. So this is how you can understand maybe roof is higher, floor is lower. So that is why it you provide 19.5, it will give you a lower number, like the 19, lower highest number, the complete number, right? That is why 19.5, the floor value of 19.5 will be nothing but a low number which is 19 okay so now next is uh okay so math dot exponential so basically it's like this e raised to power 5 if you want to calculate this so this is in order to do this in java we already have a method called exp in the math class we just have to invoke this math dot exp provide that number five here and store that value into the exp double variable and finally print that. So e raised to power five is nothing but 148.41, you know, the remaining this long value here. So that's all we have just seen the demo of all these, uh, you know, uh, important mathematical function here, but we have to just uh, you know, understand the idea why we have to go through all these methods. So basically, you can, you will need these methods while doing any mathematical operation based on, you know, the, uh, the problem is provided. So there could be a, you know, big formula where min is getting used or square root is getting used or the lower number of anything. So that is why you will need them uh, wherever you want to do the mathematical calculation or uh, solving your mathematical expressions. So we have just looked at them. In the next slide, I have created a next slide, a slide especially for random function, math.random. I would have included this here, but I made a separate slide because math.random method is something which is very important and it gets to you, it gets used way frequently than any other else. So that is why it's important to, you know, emphasize on this one. So we're gonna look at it through the program. So math.random, what does this function do whenever we 
uh, uh, invoke this. As the name suggests, generate a random number. So basically, whenever you invoke this function, it is going to do nothing but to generate a new random number, right? So if you so again, there are three cases, and we are going to look at these cases one by one. If you just say map dot random, it will always return a value between zero to one. Any random value. It depends upon the program what it picks up. And another flavor of this is you give a range and it will maybe the n, maybe the hundred, and it will give you the random number between that range, maybe between one to hundred. And there is another flavor n and m, you keep two variable, maybe two thousand to ten thousand. You know, n is two thousand and m is to ten thousand. It will give the random number between those two ranges. So basically, math dot random will generate the random number, but it has three cases the way you want to use it. So I'm going back to my editor here, and I have especially created this section for math dot random. I I was I I have disabled it, but right now I'm going to enable it, and we will run it. So if we take a look at here math dot random the section name okay so what i have done is that i have taken three cases one random one random two and random three random one is very simple plain vanilla uh, method which says math dot random so it, what it's going to do whenever this statement is going to get executed by java random number between zero to one will be um generated now the second one is now this expression math dot random right and then we get, put the highest number higher higher value and then one so random number between one to hundred is like this this is how we go right here hundred is nothing but the higher range and one is by default is the lower range so this is the second case and the third case is whenever we want to give n and m so n is the lower range and m is the highest range. So this is how we do it. Math dot random parentheses and bracket, then you know higher range minus lower range, and then at the end plus lower range. So it is it should randomly generate a number between hundred and two hundred. So let's let me just save this file and run it and let's see the demo demo of this random section. It's building right now. Okay, let me just increase this a little bit. Okay, so if you see it here, let's focus on random number section here. Okay, if you see this section here, so the first case is random one, math dot random. Random number between zero to one, it has, the program has automatically generated this 0 0.45, which is nothing but between zero to one. Now, second case is, you know, we, gave one higher range and lower range was by default one. So the random number between one to 100. So one to 100 was the pro program came up with 45. So, and next time if I run it, something else will come up. And third one is between 100 to 200, it generated 155. So if I run this program again, next time program will generate maybe something else. We don't know that. So if you see earlier it was 45, now it was 23. Earlier it was 155, now it's 107. So that's why whenever you want to uh, put something in your program where you want computer to generate a number for you, this math.random uh, function can be very handy. So that was all the idea about learning this tiny math class, but which come came out as a pretty useful sometime. So that is why I encourage you to go over them and practice this with this small program like this. So that was all for today's session. Please keep, uh, stay tuned for the next upcoming video. We're gonna learn a lot, many exciting new stuff. So that's all for today. I am Digvijay Parmar from my channel, Pick Up Pencil, and see you next time. Thank you.